load our program. And first thing I want to do, we're at 400 RPMs, switch it into low, or put the pulley to low. I really never do this uh, with the exception of things like you know, the rare huge twist drill or these slit saws. The biggest thing you want to make sure is if you do put it low, that you have it correctly shown in the path. This is the question, is, is it going to be, uh, you know, is the stock going to be rigid enough um, or do we need to support it more? If we do, no big deal. Fixture plates, the venturi pump. Not there's no rattle in the machine. Mm -hmm. Actually, the X isn't crazy critical here. Y, in theory, am I thinking right? Shouldn't have changed. Yep, <laughs> that's good. Tool We've got a temporary break in the Wednesday widget. William! What? Toothpaste. You got toothpaste? Two, two. Blue toothpaste at the shop. I mean, at the grocery store. You say hi? Hi. High five. Boom! What, ammo cracker, please? What do you want? Ammo cracker. Okay. Where are they? So we're gonna conventionally machine this, or conventional mill it, which means that cutter, which always rotates, uh, or almost always rotates, what I would call clockwise, um, is going to feed into the part left to right. So this is, slitting saws or these side miller cutters make a great example for showing climb milling. Again, the part is always going to be rotating like this, clockwise. If we were to come from right to left, you can see that we would be climbing along the face of that part. And the reason apparently that we don't want to climb mill it is it's, it's more likely going to leave the chips inside the slot. And so the conventional milling does seem to do a pretty good job of evacuating the chip. Uh, we still are gonna have some heat build up from this cut and I don't understand why. I understood when we had the old style cutter that didn't have the side cutting because as this part gets some heat in it, it might pinch down. Um, and that cutter, I believe, per Tom Lipton's video, they are relieved from, you know, outside toward the ID. But here, because we're cutting all the way along here, and then this is massively re relieved, it's kind of funny to me that it generates so much heat. Um, may also shorten the life of the tool. Here, I don't really care, you know, for what we charge for this job shop job, you know, buying one of these cutters for 20 bucks is, is really not a big deal. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do in Pathpilot, if you right click, and say front view, it lets me actually see um, all the depth heights and I can check. We go all the way down to about right here. That's my last cut. Should have enough clearance on the machine.
So you definitely heard some noise. Um, doesn't sound great. There's, you can see there's also some clearly perceptible run out, both in, maybe in the arbor, definitely in the flatness of that four inch tool, but we should be, you know, we should be fine for what we're doing here. And you can see that slot has barely any chips in it, which is great. This is pretty easy because we're not slotting. It's got some room for the chips to evacuate, really no problem at all. If I ran one more, another one of these, actually maybe when we flip it, we got to bump up those feed in rates. This could be flowing and going here. I wonder if I should, I probably should re-aim that coolant line into the slot, to be honest with you. I'll try that here in a minute. You guys get the idea, I mean, boy, that removal rate is way faster than using a small, fragile tool like a 1 8 inch end mill. And, um, yeah, obviously there's a, a pretty good amount of rigidity, much better surface feet control on a, on a 4 inch diner tool. Like this. Bad idea to move that coolant line. Darn it. I think moving that coolant line, um, I, well, either the cutter's now already already ruined from, I don't think so. I think it was just that, I think I need that coolant line to help evacuate those chips. Let me, let me work on that here. None of these seem to be in here, um, you know, really chip welded. So I think the cutter's okay. Um, a skill I learned back from my, uh, my early days of machining is plucking out a, a, you know, chip weld and aluminum chips. They are a little bit trickier. I'll usually take a little pair of these wire cutters and just cut the chip, not the tool, and it usually just pull, pulls right out. Um, my understanding is once you've done this, the tool's never really the same. That may be more true with an end mill. Obviously, if you let it run for any amount of time, you're going to build up massive amounts of heat. Um, here, again, I'm not too worried about it. None of these were really on there. I mean, you can get them really welded in there. Didn't take but a second to stall the spindle out because there's obviously no, um, it wasn't cutting at all. So let me go repost this and let's move that coolant line back to where it's really flushing out that chip. I gotta say, this is this is an example where I really like Path Pilot. I did have to re-indicate my corner. Uh, I, I did, we did lose some steps in X. And so we've cut one, two slots in full. We were on the third. So take a look, folks. This was the first slot, this is the second slot. We were on the third. If I click on that line, it jumps me to that 2D contour. And so I can just go right up to here, right click, and say set start line. You just have to, have to be careful to make sure it's going to turn on your spindle and your coolant and not crash the machine. Uh, so I usually don't, yeah, you know, very, very, very cautious and careful when I do this, but let's give it a shot. <laughs> How about that? Awesome. Perfect. Curious to see. Well, we'll see. Proof will be in the pudding. Did we 
damage this cutter from the stall out, or was it already at the end of its life? I don't think so. This will be the big, uh, actually this is the second, this will be easy. This will be the cut after this one, that's the big one. I don't like that it stops the spindle. There's no reason for it to in between these ops, but there it was actually nice to check for chips. Um, that's just a mistake. It was going 15 inches a minute there, which it should not have been. Let me go check that. That was uh, operator error. You know, they say CNC machines don't crash, operators crash them. So I, what happened is this is still considered the feed in. I should know that. So we, I just had it at 15 inches a minute. It sounds worse, um, but it was weird. It was consistently worse. It didn't seem to bog down through the cut. So maybe the tool is uh, crapping out on us. It's what we said in our video on CNC coolant basics. The three things the coolant does, lubricates, cools the part and evacuates the chip. Here, by far the most important is getting the chips away from that cutter flute, for sure. They're not building up though, so let's see how this next one goes. Someone explain this to me. Why, when we have um, the chip per two set to like half a thou, why am I getting such a big chip? You know, why is the math somehow different than a normal end mill here? Don't I don't understand that. Um, let me see, yeah, we're getting some. God, it's not even that bad though. Um, well, you can't let it continue, but. <laughs> got an idea why it's chip welding. The part's hot, like really hot, which I knew that's what's just gonna happen. When we were doing our test cut pieces, they're over on my bench, you know, the part gets hot. So let's just, uh, you know, let's let it cool for a minute. Come back. 
So we're making the heat sink. Hell, let's try using a heat sink. Uh, big piece of copper. It actually really should, in theory, pull some of that heat away pretty quickly. All right, that uh, this thing's bone cold now. So I was I was gone for maybe ten minutes, did some work. Uh, clearly, um, that did the trick. So. I hope I don't have to keep doing that every four or five slots, though. Let's uh, give her a shot and see how she goes. take a break and heat let the part cool down or if I could maybe figure a way to fasten that heat sink for the whole back of the part. Um, say, oh the other thing I didn't think to mention is that obviously our vise is okay holding the part this way. So all else equal that's nice we didn't have to flip our whole vise up and do a new work holding. So uh, I'm going to finish cutting this thing off camera we'll be back here in a minute. First op done. Uh, I'd be lying if, that, if I said that went as well as I'd hoped it might. It wasn't bad. Uh, I think the um, chip welding was our fault with the coolant and we had that too high a feed rate. Here's what's funny though, this um, piece of copper is working great and it's getting really warm which means it's pulling the heat away which is phenomenal and that's something I hadn't um, actually had thought about it um, which is heat, <laughs> heat sinking, a heat sink so uh, the aluminum will cut more differently I think someone tell me if this is right that it'll get gummier when it gets hot so pulling the heat away with this big heat sink is a good idea. Now we might have a problem though because to flip this thing um, over we're going to be grabbing it with the vise uh, right here and I'm suspecting it might not have the same amount of rigidity we've got right now where we're holding it with sort of solid stock so let's uh, clean it off and give that a try. So far, so good, though. Um, you know, should I, given how I've got to sit here and babysit it, is this a big deal? That's not a big deal. You know, boy, it would have taken so long with a 1 inch end mill. If I had confidence that it wouldn't have a problem, maybe you would do that unattended. Uh, it's not a particularly expensive piece of material if you had to start over, but you'd have some time into it. Um, I don't know. That's a tough call. Let me go clean. I'm going to clean this thing up real quick in the sink and deburl it real quick. Okay, check this out. Um, I, I am. I wish I was a better fixturist person, um, but I think I got a creative one here. Uh, I was going to use this 246 block to just help support the back side of this part because, again, we're clamping on these thin uh, heat sink veins now. And when I lined it up, I thought, wait a minute here. There's got to be some way to do this. You know, this doesn't work. I can't get a clamp over here, and the big clamp is going to get in the way. And then I thought, well, wait a minute here. I've got this hole right here. Um, let's take a little piece of tape to protect our finish a little. And let's stick this through here. Just a quarter 20 screw. And I need a big washer on the back side. I don't think this one's going to work. bigger one. My justification for not using a 7 16 right now is the fact that we are uh, organizing all of our tools which I'm really really excited to show you guys what we come up with. Um, these are sitting right here next to the table. So here's the thing this doesn't even have to be that doesn't even have to be that tight. I just I just want it to kind of help keep it from vibrating so I'm kind of proud of that. Thank <laughs> you. 
awesome. I, again, I can't say that this is like the most proudest recipe in, uh, I've ever come up with, but that worked, and that was gonna that was the furthest away from the clamping area. So I think that this is gonna work to finish up the slots here, which is freaking great. but I'm doing two things. One is that after every full slot cut, I'm taking a break for a second, letting the part cool down, including putting the heat sink on the front of it. Um, obviously I can't put it on the back side now because I've got that 246 block. And then I also went ahead and bumped up the feed rate override here in PathPilot because um, there's one thing I know is that if you're generating heat, uh, if you, sorry, if you are rubbing, which means too little of a chip load per tooth, you're gonna generate heat. Now, you know, I don't know what, I just don't have the confidence right now to, to tell why that's happening because in theory, the chip, the chip looks like a real chip. Um, but I thought if I can go faster, still evacuate the chips and have the horsepower, that's, that's a good thing. So we're trying it a little bit faster. And then for us, anytime feed rate override uh, goes on, the blue hose comes out as a reminder. Talk about a relief. Uh, I think knock on wood or steel, cast iron. All right, hard work is done. Now all we've got to do is add a little bit of taper to these, as you can see in the model. It is a, uh, here, eye on the keyboard to measure it. And if I click, see if I click this line, and I click this line, it'll show me, oops. 91.4, so it's a 1.4 degree angle. I don't have that kind of a tool. Honestly, we could have had one made for us. That's not a huge deal. Um, Carl at Lakeshore Carbide even does that. Uh, but I'd actually talked to the customer when we bid the job and they uh, understand and are okay with it being stair-stepped. So I've got this um, tool also from Lakeshore Carbide, which is, um, you can see right here, it is a 1 8 inch three flute and mill with a small corner radius, three to five thousands, really tiny, helps get rid of the weakest point on the tool, which is really important. And it's only got a half inch length of cut. So as you can see here, it won't, it technically isn't deep enough. Um, that would have been more of a problem if we had tried to use this tool to cut the slots. Um, but it shouldn't be a problem here because it's tapered. So as we go down, it'll be moving away from the sidewall uh, when you when we do the parallel operation here, I hovered over, excuse me, 3D, I hovered over the options, and if you look at contour, it says, this is the best strategy for finishing steep walls. Well, I'll take that. So we're doing one strategy for the two ends, because the two ends each um, have a slightly different uh, set of geometries, and then we're patterning um, the one here in the, right here, so if I edit this, you can see all I picked for the chain was the square. Let's redo that just to show you. So I'll click the X right here. So machining boundary is selection, and then machining boundary, if I hover over, do I get it? There we go, right there. And on passes, we're going down one eighth of an inch. So that'll be the question is how does that look when we're done? 
5100 RPMs, 25 inches a minute, which is two and a half thou per tooth. It's a higher chip load, but first of all, remember last week's video, it's okay to run higher chip loads. And two, we've got so little material to remove here. Uh, it certainly shouldn't put too much deflection on the tool. This is only aluminum as well. And um, with such small cutting, you're actually chip thinning, so you wanna go faster because it's actually not two and a half thou per tooth, it's some amount less. So by patterning it, it does all those interim ones. And if I right click on finishing cuts, machining time, the whole thing is 37 minutes. So um, this is definitely not something I gotta sit there and babysit. The last thing I wanna do though is, right now our coordinate system is in the middle of the part. I don't wanna do that. I wanna pick this top left edge. And if we zoom in though, right now, the customer had a just an edge break to fill it on it. I want to get rid of that because if anything, we're going to either hand deburr it or actually chamfer it with a chamfer tool. But to pick that point, actually, can I pick it without deleting it? So edit the setup, change it to origin to selected point. Yeah, I don't think I can right now. Let's, um, so go back into model and all I've got to do is defeature it. Click on it, hit delete. I'm going, to, I'm going to delete all of them because if we do, just to be consistent, if we do come back and chamfer them, um, I don't even like a model as chamfers. Okay, back in the cam. Edit this. So I'll change my origin to selected point. Pick right here. Perfect. Let's, let's go make some chips. Sweet, you're done, except um, I am gonna go ahead and run a chamfer mill along all these fins here. Just, uh, it's the right thing to do uh, for, for sure. So let's go bang that out in Fusion real quick. We've gotta delete two of these uh, fillets first. So hop over into CAD. I'll activate the component and de-feature. Fusion does an awesome job of de-featuring stuff. Click on it, hit delete key. Click on this, hit the delete key. And I don't need to de-feature the rest of these because we're gonna pattern them. So I'm done, hop back into cam, and I'm going to duplicate this whole setup because it has the same origin I want in the pattern. So I right click, Duplicate, what I can do, I'll delete, uh, let's see here, make sure it's active, the operation itself or setup is active. I can delete this, 2D chamfer, tool 25 for me, G 
geometry will be hold down the alt key to pick just two lines. That's oh, holding down the alt key lets you pick open contours, which is awesome. Same thing over here. Now, let's see here. Chamfer width, just really an edge break type chamfer. We'll do 10 thou. Chamfer tip offset and clearance, uh, one ten oh, oh, five thou, fine. Clearance shouldn't actually matter. That's how far it stays away from the model if you're chamfering up to a shoulder. Click OK, see what we get. I like running a simulation. OK, and just scrub through it, so boom. Not gonna touch the opposite fin, which is good, and it's chamfering right along the nice side of the part. I like that. We'll do the same thing here in the pattern. Delete that. I wonder if I activate the pattern that creates it inside of there. Um, can I just duplicate it? Save my settings here, maybe? Duplicate and drag it into the pattern. Sweet. Okay, and now I just gotta change my geometry to so delete that. Pick, hold that Alt one two, and I'm gonna click OK. That chamfered there, and that patterned it. Uh, did I want to play with my speeds and feeds? Uh, we can go a little faster. Three thousand and fifteen. Okay, so there and there. Looks good. Let's go uh, finish her up. Look at that, folks. Isn't that awesome? I think that turned out pretty darn nice. You can see we've got our profiles. Let's go clean it up real quick and ship her off. Do the uh, shape test way too loose. This is actually head off to the UK, folks. Boom. Hope you enjoyed. See you next Wednesday.